Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to League Racing TV here for round number three of the European Esports Championship. My name is of course Michael Edwards going to be taking you through the action of course and join us alongside me in the country box as always on a Tuesday evening is the one, it is Yoni, it is Malk. Malk, how are you doing my friend? I'm doing very well mate, I'm doing very well. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. Obviously, before we go any further, we'd like to apologise on the small delay of the stream getting going. There have been a few technical issues with the uh, the lobby. Unfortunately, uh, invites are not really working right now on the game. But we have managed to sort it out, and we will be getting going uh, pretty soon. But, yeah, I mean, personally, I'm doing fantastic. And uh, I know we're going to be in for some incredible action here tonight. And, of course, round number three does see us take in the incredible... Hungaroring for the Hungarian Grand Prix. We're here in Budapest, of course, uh, around the 4.3 kilometer circuit, the 2.7 mile circuit in length, 35 laps await these guys, 14 corners, six to the left and eight to the right with two DRS zones, one down in towards turn number one and one in towards turn number two. Only the one detection point. So if you do uh, pick up DRS, you're going to have a double dose of DRS down in towards turn two to get that job done into turn one and stay ahead through turn two. Of course, uh, free confidence of tyres available here in the dry, the C4 soft, C3 medium and C2 hard compound tyres. But of course, intermediates and wet tyres also available if there is going to be any changeable conditions. And honestly, after coming in the, coming in tonight, after what was an incredible race at, at round number two at the Spanish Grand Prix, I mean... It's, it's definitely going to be even closer here because we felt the times were going to be close in uh, in Spain. It's going to be even closer here in Hungary, that is for sure. Absolutely. I think the way that we've seen uh, throughout the, the Spanish Grand Prix, it was just explosive and it was just like one little mistake and you're just going to be right at the back. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, there was like a second within like top 14, 15 last week. So I'll be very, very surprised if we get I will say I'll be very, very surprised if we have a bigger gap. But obviously, I will not be so very surprised, as you said, that we might see a, l a lower time, but also so close to each other. But we have to wait and see how everything goes at the Hungarian Grand Prix, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, just say a quick reminder of how things ended uh Ended last week, of course, uh, on track. Uh, Bogdan Moldovan took the victory ahead of Leo London, second place. Furious for Team England in P3. Jay Van Bussel in P4 with uh, Nando Moria, P5. Kendall Lutt in P6. Justin P7. Tope in P8. Hazara P9. And, of course, uh, David Locos there in P10. And looking at the uh, the stewards, uh, steward in office as well, just seeing if there was any uh, position changes. I don't believe there was uh, any position changes uh, in the steward so that of course is the uh, the finishing order uh, proper and the top nine from that race I mean less than 10 seconds separating the top nine of course it was only 3.6 seconds separating first from eighth that's how close it was last week and we're looking forward to seeing more of the same here tonight. But of course, looking at the driver lineup for tonight, of course, it is uh, a few changes in terms of the, the driver lineup. Of course, uh, there have been some uh, late late changes and uh, one or two uh, dropouts. Of course, uh, Team France, uh, no Nando Moria here tonight. It's going to be uh, no Grosjean uh, representing Team France. So he'll be stepping into that second French seat along with uh, Tony Rich. Uh, obviously, we've got the, the Finnish team with uh, Top and Tino there in the Mercedes. Uh, team Netherlands stay as they are with Jerry Van Bussel and uh, Thomas uh, Covers. Uh, team England, Harry Nunns and Jack Lafferty. Uh, team Sweden with uh, Emil Lundell and uh, Seb. Uh, with Team Poland, we're going to have uh, Alan Banazak and um, Mikola Nowiski as well there in the Alpha Taris. Uh, team Norway is Hazara and ET8 Oscar. And we have a change, obviously, with uh, the Slovenian team as 
I'll Jose uh, Mika Lavzina. I, I apologize if I have uh, if I have butchered your name there, mate. Uh, unfortunately, he has dropped out, uh, so it will be uh, Maj uh, Krasnik uh, on his own, the sole Slovenian here tonight, and unfortunately as well. Both of the uh, Romanian drivers in 2D and Bogdan Moldovan have also dropped out uh, here tonight. So there are the changes. We've got 15 drivers here tonight uh, going to be getting through the action. And uh, we are just about loading into uh, qualifying right now. But before we do, let's have a quick look at the standings and how things shape up after the Spanish Grand Prix. Team Finland lead the way on 44 points and they are 7 points ahead of Team France in 2nd place. Team Romania tied with Team France on 37 points. They're in P3 with Team England in 4th on 36 points. 34 points for Team Sweden in uh, P5 and of course Team Netherlands also on 34 points in P6. 7th place for Team Norway on 25 points with Slovenia on 12 points down in P8 and Poland on 9 points in p9 and of course uh denmark who uh unfortunately had to pull out of the event after round one they're in 10th place on two points and of course uh we was going to have uh team germany join us but unfortunately uh they were unable to get through in the end but that's how things are looking in the driver standings and of course the drivers we have here racing tonight malk very close in the standings of course uh team finland do have a seven point lead at the top but 10 points separating the top six teams, the top six nations, incredibly close uh, in the European Esports Championship thus far. Oh, absolutely. I, mean, I cannot believe that it's just that close at the st pretty much with the, the, re the, the first few races. And I cannot wait to get that build up to see if, the, if this is going to be really close coming up to the end of the season. I hope so, anyway, because we would like to see so many and uh, so many nations battling out to see who is the top nation in in the european esports championship as we're watching live on the hungarian grand prix but also throughout the season itself obviously we've got about i believe seven races in total so this is coming up to the halfway marker i believe mike so anything to, to play for tonight and it needs to be crucial for some of these teams yeah, absolutely. And of course, we are underway in qualifying, so we're going to revert over to the action on track as we're on board with Mikola Nowicki as uh, he's about to get his lap underway. Just coming into the final sector right now. He does have a Mercedes in behind him, uh, who could potentially uh, overtake him to begin his lap first. But we're going to stay on board with uh, with Mikola Nowicki as he's coming through the penultimate corner, going to be gearing up to get his lap underway. And let's see what he can do as he comes through the final corner. Tries to get the best traction possible. And he is going to begin now his run down into turn number one. Of course, the Polish driver with DRS wide open down into turn number one. Breaking down third gear. The gear of choice there for Nowicki. Good bit of traction on the exit. A little bit of a wobble in the second phase. But DRS wide open once again down in towards turn number two. And very wide through turn number two, and uh, not ideal there. So, Reed does tighten up uh, turn number three for him, which will lose him a little bit of uh, a little bit of time as we go up the hill. Keeps it all valid through turn number four, and of course, that's a corner we're gonna have to keep an eye on as well. Turn number four, where we could be seeing uh, a fair few warnings, track limit warnings uh, come through as well as uh, turn number five where that inside curve can be very lethal in the heart of the middle sector right now we're seeing the cars just stepping out slightly as there is no wiki invalidating his lap and he did not look comfortable in the middle sector as we went through eight nine and it's a 53.8 in the middle sector but we're gonna see uh, if he's gonna set this uh, lap time just to get a uh, just get a time on the board as we come through the penultimate corner and uh, he's going to back out into the pits and I believe the Mercedes was the next one behind him. Is that Tino or is it Top? It was Tino. Tino's into the pits. Uh, next man is... Uh, sorry, what was that? It was just invalidate. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You know. you're, you are good, my friend. Uh, as we got... Emil uh, Lundell uh, just in his lap as well. Obviously, the Swedish driver. We're going to see what he can do. Heading down in towards turn number one. First Ooh. time of the night coming in. Jerry Van Bussel uh, with a 14.6. Immediately beaten by Tope with a 14.5. 14.8 for Jack uh, there for Team England. 
Uh, Oscar, they were a 15 flat. In terms of a qualifying lap around you, I mean, I, I was I was thinking that maybe you know, we'd get potentially down into the low low 14s, but could we see an absolute wonder lap? Could we see anyone get into the 13s, perhaps? I, I know it's early doors at the minute. We're on 14.5. I reckon 39, uh, sorry, 1 minute 13.8, I reckon. I reckon we, we do going to hit the 13s. It's just who is going to be the, the, the most bestest driver ever to pull off the absolute best of a lap at the Hungarian Grand Prix. It is going to be tough because, as you said, penalties galore and like track limits is so now. There's not much overtakes in this track and we've just got yellow flags on the set three of the minute, but I'll, I would like to see someone hitting the 13s, but if it is, it'll be a 13.8 for me. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking we might not get to the 13s, but I do think a low 14 could be possible for some of these guys, especially with the banker laps that have come in so far. Obviously, some drivers are already into the mid 14s, uh, so potentially we could see it. Obviously, in the chat right now, we have uh, the legend who's always here on the Tuesday night, Nordic Ninja. Uh, absolutely loving life uh, in the chat as well. We got uh, ET8 Lapa as well in the chat, and obviously uh, both of them showing support, saying Finland are cooking, and indeed Finland have been cooking thus far this season. 44 points they've gained over the course of the first two races. As uh, <laughs> Lapa says, a uh, 113 in dreams. Uh, so I mean. I mean, it could be a wonder lap. You never know. We never count anything out to you in uh, in the European Esports Championship. It would be a incredible lap if it does happen. I, personally, I think uh, we will get into the low 14s or there or thereabouts. But uh, yeah, first round of laps have come through. Right now, it is Top who leads the way. 14.5 for him. Jai Van Bussel, who's on the front row of him at the moment. 14.6. Now, last week... I mean, we saw Jerry Van Russell coming through the order at the end to get a fantastic P4 finish. And if he gets a good qualifying, this could mean incredible things for the Dutch team. Absolutely. I, I really do hope he does well, to be honest, because he's one of those drivers to, as we said uh, beforehand, we want to look out for. And I hope he does hope he does well tonight because he could be on for an absolute classic for for the Dutch for the Dutch team itself but the pressure is on I know he's only a 10 behind but as I said if he can master it and produce the goods in tonight's uh, round three it'll be a, it'll be a Dutch delight <laughs> a Dutch delight so say. absolutely a Dutch delight could be on the cards on board with Tino though 53.4 in the middle sector coming through turn number 12 now in towards turn number 13 the long left hander as he looks for the best traction possible now into the final corner need to get the car rotated just right through here not get too greedy on the traction and looks like Tino has done that to perfection to the line will come Ooh. Tino and he's up in the P5 a 14.8 here for uh, Tino and with Topa's teammate up in a provisional pole right now it's looking very, very good for Team Finland. Absolutely, and uh, they're, they're absolutely flying. And as you said, they're flying in the, the in the um, in the standings as well. So I'm not very surprised that they're in the top five. But if Tino can try to catch up with Tope, it'll be even better for the Finland. But I'm just watching uh, Jerry Van Buzzle now doing his lap. Now, can he try and improve that one at one fourteen point six? He's coming to the first corner now. Oh, that back end is just trying to hold on. You can see that he's trying to push on massively. Yellow flags on sector two. I'm not sure what was that for. We're still pushing on now. And as you rightly said, Mike, these guys are going to have to try and be careful not to cause any havoc with penalties galore and over track limits. Uh, indeed, a 27.021, uh, Jerry Van Basel. That's 600 slower. 600 slower than his uh, original first sector time. And he's coming to the chicane part now. He's keeping that car. Feel like you're on a roller coaster ride. And he'll be inside stuff, Mike. He'll be inside. And this is what I love about the second sector, because it does feel like you're on a roller coaster ride. Coming to the end of the second sector now. He is two tenths slower. He is two tenths slower. So 
so that is not good news for Jerry at the moment. If he can try and somehow, somehow get an unbelievable third sector, it, he's he's hogging on that uh, the Kirby. Oh, he's teasing us, Mike. He's absolutely teasing us. Uh, potentially teasing us here, but of course, uh, probably thought he could gain more time uh, if he comes back in, resets the mindset and goes again. Uh, we're on board with uh, Alan Banasek now coming through the penultimate corner. Let's see what the Polish man can do. Coming through the final corner now is Alan and uh, to the line he'll come. DRS wide open. What's it going to be for Alan? Up to P4. Big improvement there from the Polish driver. Gets himself onto the second row of the grid. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Just watching Seb now in that Williams car. Trying to push on now in that first sector. We'll see what time he can try and do. He's a tenth quicker. He is a tenth quicker, but it's not purple. It is not purple at the moment. Coming to the second sector now. I always feel like the second sector at the start, where the chicane is, is the trickiest part because you have to get that momentum right through those awkward corners that you go through in that roller coaster ride itself. Uh, Seb now pushed on. You get a flag still on sector two. And Seb is still two tenths, he's about two tenths quicker. Uh, so at the moment, he might go up to third, the way it looks. He might go up to third. Jerry's just coming up to do his outlap now. So we've got a few drivers. Here we go now. Seventy's trying to hog the corner. He needs to push on. He needs those rocket fuel now. And I tell you what, he is moved up to fourth now, Mike. Yep, Team Sweden doing Ooh. well. Of course, uh, Emil up there on the front row. It's Tony Reese for Team France responds. It's a 14.3 from the Frenchman. Incredible lap time from him, and his teammate is on a lap as well. Three tenths up for Noah Grosjean. Coming through the uh, the penultimate corner right now. Can he get up the order to join his teammate at the sharp end here in qualifying? That's going to be the big question for the final corner. It comes uh, Grosjean now, and to the line he'll go. P9 is an improvement, but he's not going to get himself uh, up in anywhere near his teammate with a time like that. He needs half a second to find uh, around this track as uh, we have. Ooh, ooh, we've got enough find that. Obviously, uh, Emil has uh, uh, dropped. I think we got we got Jack, we got Team England's Jack Laverty coming through the final corner now to the line. Will he go and Ooh. up to P3 for Team England? And of course, uh, England needing a big result here. Because remember what happened last week? Uh, I mean, last week to uh, Dylan Warren when his wheel disconnected and he was forced to retire from the race. After, I mean, Team England having a 1-2 in qualifying it was a front row lockout and then in the race as well they were controlling it they were one two in the race as well so heartbreak that happened uh for team england with dylan's uh wheel disconnection and jack uh for team england now doing his best to put uh team england back up there uh where obviously they feel that england deserve to be up at the front Absolutely, I think it was just unfortunate for uh, the warren to try uh, for that wheel to disconnect but hopefully the way they've been doing at the England, they've been into the top two and then they struggled in the race in itself. But it is, some of it's not their, not their fault, some of it's just their fault as well. Oh, Tino! Oh! Tino did a 114.461. Slowly game there, but I think I think you might be right, Mike. And I think you might be right for the guys who are watching on the or list or what the typing on the chat. Thought it was the 13 was a, a dream. It might be a dream, because you might be right, it might be a low 14, as we say. But Tino, uh, unbelievable stuff from, from the Mercedes driver. Yeah, Tino uh, doing fantastic there for Team Finland. As, uh, I'm on board with uh, Thomas Covers here for Team Netherlands, coming through uh, turn number 12. Now in towards the Panama corner, turn number 13. Keeps the car all in check there, decent on the throttle. And now for the final corner, yet to put a lot of time on the board is the Dutch driver, but let's see if he's going to be able to do it. DRS wide open now to the line. He is a valid lap time. He puts himself into the top 10, but he's half a second off the uh, pole position. Absolutely, but Topes, Topes had a pur purple second sector. He's going to be crossing over the line now. 14, <laughs> 4, 6, 1. Both, both drivers in the same team exactly dead on. Proper, proper laps. What a lap. What a lap indeed. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Team Finland, uh, right now it's a front row lockout for the pair of them. Both of their drivers, identical lap times there. I know it says purple on top's lap time, but obviously Tino will have the, the pole position advantage just uh, from the fact that he set his time before uh, Tope in this qualifying session. And what we have right there is, honestly, what it takes to uh, to win here in uh, the European Esports Championship. Consistency. Team Finland have been very consistent so far this season. Granted, there's only been two races thus far, but that is all you really need. That's uh, Alan Banasek uh, going to go well off the track there and pick up an invalidation. Uh, I believe he was on his way into the pit lane anyway. As one thing that we haven't mentioned, obviously quite overcast here in qualifying. Do you think there might be a threat of rain at the end of this qualifying session? I hope so, because we're, we're enjoying ourselves and <laughs> watching an absolute classic of the qualifying and hopefully that will build up to the race. But if you want wet conditions, these drivers need to be at their very, very best. And that Hungarian, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we have seen a few times in the rain. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see rain during the race uh, this evening. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, Nordic Ninja putting in the chat, Tino Tope, we definitely need lap time side-by-side -side POV for the comparison. And if you want to reach out to me after this race, I'll be more than happy to provide uh, a little bit of uh, commentary over that as well. You know, a cheeky little bit of content uh, for the online world. But on board right now with Azara, who'll be the, fi the first man to set his final lap times. And we've got just over two minutes to go in the qualifying session. We've got drivers coming up the pit lane now. How important is it going to be for the likes of uh, Harry Nuttons and, of course, uh, Mikola Nowicki, who have yet to put a lap time on the board? How much pressure do you think these two are under now? Extremely, because if they mess if they mess up now, that's it. They, they can't afford to mess up. They can't afford to mess up. And if they do, they have to play their cards right and try and get through the through the track as quickly as possible. And I, I honestly, I, I think they might have enough time depending on where they are on track. But I, honestly, they can't afford to mess up. To be fair. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on board with Hazara now, going to be the first man to uh, set his final lap time. He's giving a very tight full turn number two there, uh, using all the track on the exit of turn two. That might have just compromised him coming through. Uh, turn three, as he has a little bit of traffic to contend with, who gets out of the way quite swiftly. And now for turn number four, marginally up is Azara. Needs to find more time now if he wants to get into the top ten. Uh, needs to find around uh, around three and a half tenths if he wants to get himself into that top ten and get himself ahead of the likes of uh, Grosjean and Covers. But a lot of traffic ahead of the uh, the Norwegian driver here coming through. Turn number 11 now, middle sector split, what's the same? Two times up, he is on, oh, traffic for Zara. And it was the Alpha Tauri, uh, who was that? Was that uh, Mikola? It was, it was Mikola, uh, Mikola Nowicki there, caught napping, uh, coming through. There has uh, Zara, well, obviously that probably will get reported to the stewards, but Zara oh. there, uh, had an opportunity to potentially uh, jump up into the top 10, but uh, frauded by the uh, by the, by the Polish driver of uh, Mikola. Absolutely, and that was just ex extraordinary moments. And everyone was just all bunched up at third sector because they just don't want to make a silly mistake. And we're coming up to about 10 seconds left of the qualifying. Now, I think that is it. Everyone needs to put the prep. Everything on the line. Everything needs to be on the line. I'm just watching Harry now do his lap. Did a 26.991 on that uh, the first sector. He needs to push on now. Qualifying has now stopped. Qualifying has now stopped. The last time we ever had three, I think it was two or three drivers ever had um, the exact pole position time. I think it was was it Canada? I think it was or in the real life F1. It was like many many years ago. But it was just insane stuff. I'm just watching Harry now. 53.359. It is not purple, though. So he might have to try and do something and pull a rabbit out of the hat and try and get close to his teammate in, in P4 at the moment. He's coming to the last few corners now. And it looks like there's a few drivers. Oh, what's happened, Mike? Uh, yeah, uh, Emil Lundell goes up in the P3 as uh, Seabin Proof going up in the P, P6. We've seen uh, both of the Dutch drivers 
uh, uh, Invalde on their lap time as Jack for Team uh, England goes up in the P4, so good lap there from him. Harry Nunn's uh, goes oh, up. Alan. Oh, Alan Banazak uh, goes up in the P4. Great lap from him. Uh, Tino to the line, and he oh. improves on his lap time, so they won't be identical lap times for Team Finland. It will be Tino who will take a pole position, good and proper, and it is a finish front row. But will it be a finish 1-2 in the race? We'll have to find out sooner or later. Can they do something that England could not do in the race? Keep that 1-2. That's the big question of it all. Can they keep that 1-2? And I think I think the way that the form is going for the Finland team, I wouldn't be surprised. I'll be very, very surprised if they make a massive, massive mistake. But fair play. I was expecting them to keep the, the, the fastest lap twice, but... Tino does not want to do that. He wants to prove that he is the fastest driver this evening. Absolutely. So that's when you threw the order one more time. Here's a front row lockout for Team Finland as Tino tops the timesheets here with Tope alongside him in second place. And of course, we've got Team Sweden's uh, Emil Lundell in P3 with uh, Poland's Alan Banazak in P4. And of course, we've got Team England's Jack uh, Laverty in P5 with uh, Francis Tony Reich in P6. P7 goes away at the second Swedish driver of Seb. And of course, we've got the Dutch driver, Jerry Van Bussel, in P8. Harry Nunn's for Team England in P9 with uh, no growth on for Team France rounding out the top 10. Outside the top 10, we've got the Norwegian driver of Oscar. Then, of course, we've got the Dutch driver, Thomas Covers, uh, Maj uh, Krasinek, Hazara, and Mikola Nowicki there with no time on his uh, on his qualifying runs, but I mean potentially uh, a penalty coming his way for uh, for essentially uh, blocking Hazara there. Yeah, it's uh, just an unfortunate matter, but obviously that will have to be addressed at the. Oh, did you do you see what I'm seeing, Mike? Oh. Well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, everyone, everyone, on my, everyone looking at the stream right now will see me going like this because I'm looking and I'm seeing some weather conditions of which I am very familiar with being from Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, the heavens have opened here in Hungary. It is absolutely chucking it down outside, not only in real life, but on track as well. As we probably will have full wet compound tyres to start with. Will we get going to the Inters at some point? I don't know. But looking at the uh, conditions, it's heavy rain for the start of this race. And we are in for a absolute treat. Absolute treat? I, I, I will not be in any of their shoes at the moment because it's just torrential rain all around the track itself. And it is very, very difficult. They need to be careful at turn one, obviously, because they... They have to judge the braking. I would not be surprised uh, if there is crashes galore at turn one because it's going to be absolutely dead, especially down the hill. And and turn four, obviously, they have to judge their braking point as well. So, yeah, absolutely. I don't want to be no shoes, to be honest. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to really judge the braking zones. But obviously, uh, looking at the track right now, you can see the heavens have opened. It is absolutely throwing it down on this Hungarian Grand Prix circuit at the Hungaroring. The rain is here and we are getting ready for those five red lights. And of course, uh, one thing as well that drivers going to keep an eye out for is the spray coming off the car ahead. Sometimes it can be very difficult uh, to see if uh, someone has to slam on the brakes so to say if someone slows up ahead and maybe two cars ahead it can cause a chain reaction and we could have instance galore but we're going to go to those five red lights now to get us underway here in round number three at the hangar ring lights are out and we are underway here 35 laps away in the drivers and there's intermediate tires on everyone's car running down in towards turn number one and it is absolutely drenched out there on track and I'm, I'm surprised we didn't see anyone gambling for a set of the wet compound tyres. As uh, through turn number one, Alan uh, Banazak uh, up in the P3 as uh, Emil tries to fight him back down into us. Turn number two, and is he going to be able to get done? Yes, he will. Keeps a tight line through the inside as uh, Sieb and Jerry Van Bussel lay side by side momentarily coming through turn number two and into three. Jerry Van Bussel into P7. See, Gosh. oh, that Gosh. is Maj and Grosjean out of this race. And that is a virtual safety car here on lap one. We just saw it in the background. 
I believe it was Yelping of uh, Maj uh, Krasinik who just went spearing off and I think potentially might have inadvertently uh, taken uh, Grosjean with him but both drivers out of this race lap number one that is not that is not what you want in the first lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix for round three of the European Esports Championship I don't I, obviously we just saw it from the back end of the the track of the track itself so I wasn't sure exactly who was at fault itself but both drivers unfortunately for them they are out of the Grand Prix uh, we're just watching now for the virtual safety car to slow down. I did say um, I know I said turn, between turn one and turn four I did not I did not expect it to be a, uh, a little bit later on than that but they're still going they're back racing now Mike yep absolutely back to green flag racing and uh, I mean uh, yeah, I mean, as uh, Nordic Ninja has put in uh, in chat there, GG to the only uh, Alpine, of course, the only uh, Slovenian driver able to make it here tonight. Marš uh, Krasinek, who is, of course, now out of this race. We're seeing Alan yeah. Benazak uh, getting the move done on Emil oh, Lundell, but Emil's going to have a chance to try and break down the inside. He'll go side by side with the Alfa Tari as the Polish and the Swedish driver are still side by side coming through turn number three. As they go through side by side, Tony Reach in the background, and he's got a monstrous run, but he's not going to find any moves here into turn number four. They're still side by side from turn number four. Tony Reach oh. has to slam on the brakes, and that's going to open things up for Jerry Van Bussel now down the inside. Here comes the Dutch driver, the Dutch maestro, down the inside. They're still side by side. No. It's two by two, like Noah's Ark, as I believe Jerry Van Bussel is free wide into the chicane. My god, it's incredible stuff. It looks like Jerry Van Bussel has lost out dramatically there. As he had to send it on the inside. Tony Reach uh, up there right now uh, battling for P5 with Jerry Van Bussel as Alan Banzak and uh, London now have uh, potentially uh, calmed down just a little bit as Jack uh, Laverty for Team England just sitting in behind waiting for his opportunity. As Tony Reach, a little bit of contact on uh, Jerry Van Bussel there. Arguably oh no. should have backed out as it looks like Team England's driver has just been overtaken by Steve. They're still side by side. It's two by two like Noah's oh Ark out there God. in very, uh, very similar conditions. A flood has begun here in Hungary. It is two by two like Noah's Ark and uh, Jack Laverty is going to look for the better exit coming out the final corner and he's got the better exit on Steve. Uh, Seb, sorry, as he runs down in towards turn number one, using a bit of battery Come up on. in the slipstream. Goes the youngest one, has a peak down the inside, but obviously not wanted to commit to a move. He would have been high risk, high reward for Jack there if he was able to pull oh. that off, but he did cover off uh, Seb there as Harry Nunn's looking to make a move on Oscar down uh, on the exit of turn number one, but gets a little bit caught up behind uh, Seb, and that's going to allow Oscar to tree, really try and fight back against him. Full turn three, they go, and it's Harry Nunn's that holds on to P9. What an unbelievable battle we see. And we're still going to a battle going between Oscar. Oh my days. They're trying to hold on for dear life with a two to beds and three to bed moments. Absolutely. What, three what wide way? into the chicane. Absolutely it, does not work in the dry. Never mind in these conditions. But fortunately, they were all able to make it through without, uh, without any serious uh, issues. And that has allowed, obviously, with all the battling, that has allowed the, the split to happen. The two finished drivers now 1.8 up the road. And they are now in full control of this race. Now, Emil Lundell has to be clever when applying his ERS as uh, Maj uh, Krasinic uh, leaves the session. Unfortunately, they're for Team Slovenia and their sole driver here tonight. But Emil Lundell now has to be careful, especially with uh, applying that ERS, because if you apply it too early, you could potentially light up the rears and go for a bit of a spin. But both of the finished drivers really pushing on and Emil there trying to respond. And it's going to be a long race. We're starting to see gaps form now as uh, Alan Banazak uh, is, of course, uh, a second behind Emil. And then, of course, Jay Van Bussel ran about second off the back of, uh, of Alan as well. No DRS, of course, in these conditions. So they're all going to have to rely on their ERS deployment and their ERS management skills. But right now, if you're a fan of Team Finland, this is the perfect start for you in this race. Absolutely. It's just it's just absolutely unbelievable scenes for Finland. Uh, but can they finish? That's the big question. Can they finish at the end? That's the big question of it all. But hopefully they'll do something that not that England could not do 
uh, in the last few races that we have seen. Now, just watching Tony now trying to close into Jerry Van Buzzle now for fifth place. He's still trying to put the pressure on, but while I was watching that uh, second and third lap battle, Mike, I was surprised no one crashed during that chicane as well as, because it was, it was all two by two, like you said, with a Noah, uh, Noah's architect. Yeah, it really was uh, two by two. Obviously, there was a small bit of contact between, uh, between I believe it was uh, Tony and uh, Jerry Van Bussel going through turn number 12. And you can see uh, Tony really closing up to the back of that rear wing on that Ferrari, on the Dutch driver. But Jerry Van Bussel holds on to P5 for the time being. As you saw, Tony Reese just getting a little bit onto the inside curb, losing him just a little bit of time. And what we're seeing now, Emil Lundell is closing that gap in, but it's not coming down rapidly. And... That's going to be the thing. It's going to be a race of attrition now for the Swedish driver. He needs to just take time out of the two finish drivers up ahead. He does appear to have a decent pace around here. So we're going to see uh, if Emil is going to have the the pace to really close up to both of these drivers up ahead. Obviously, Tope and Tino, uh, Tope especially, he has to use a bit of VRS uh, deployment. And obviously, Emil right now is sitting on around 85%. He does have uh, ERS to burn. But he's got to be careful about where he applies the ERS, as everything now appears to have settled down somewhat, which uh, does allow us to get our breath back, fortunately. But, yeah, I mean, what a uh, what an opening sequence of laps, obviously, with uh, Marj and uh, Grosjean, obviously, out of this race with the, the collision uh, between those two. And then, of course, uh, the free wide moment into the chicane. Then we have, in the final sector, two by two, like Noah's arc, uh, as, I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and... Yeah, incredible battle and you can only see it here on League Racing TV here in the European Esports Championship. Absolutely, what a way, what a way to broadcast it on a, on the fantastic on the YouTube channel as well. Hit that like button guys, if you haven't done it, hit that like button if you like the racing so far. We're on lap 5 of 35 of oh, the Hungarian Grand Prix, still watching Tony now trying to close the gap onto Jerry. I, I do think that the, the, the wings is going to play the part because they, they try their best to catch up, Mike, but I just can't see anything that they're going to try to do. Oh! Jerry and Alan going side by side. Two in a bed moment now. Down the straight in two. Turn for... What? Oh, he sends it down the inside. Jerry on bus oh, I think that's a bit too deep, though, for my leg, and that's allowed Tony Reese to come through. Tony Reese gets through on Alan and uh, gets a switch back. Beautiful switch back there from Tony Reese. Gets the job done on Jerry Van Bussel. And now Jerry and Alan side by side coming through turn number four. As we get a little bit of a lag moment there uh, in, the, in the lobby. So, uh, fortunately, uh, they both managed to get through without uh, any like, severe contact there. But, I mean, if I'm Jerry Van Bussel, I'm probably uh, giving that position back to uh, to Alan. Because, uh, obviously, ran way too deep into turn number two there. And, I mean, I just feel it's good sportsmanship to give the position back. Yeah, hopefully so. But I don't know whether they're both, they're both are fighting for it. So, I don't know if Jerry thought that they were both fighting and you just carrying on with it. But we'll find out sooner or later. But oh, they don't want to... oh, Alan, it's the back of Jerry Van Bussel. Jerry falling down the order now. And it's oh. just it's just got a bit spicy there. And I think uh, Alan might uh, might have potentially picked up some wing damage from that as uh, he went straight into the back of the Scuderia Ferrari there through turn number 12. That might allow Team England's Jack Laverty now to get through up the order. And that has promoted uh, not only uh, Jack up a spot, but it's also promoted uh, Seb, Harry Nunns and Oscar up a spot. And here comes Jack Laverty down the inside. He sends Come it on. into turn number one. Job done from the Englishman. But the switch back there from Alan Banazak. As he's going to run down in towards turn number two. He's not going to use his ERS. So, and the Englishman holds on to the position. Oh, beautiful stuff. Brilliant stuff there from Jack. And he's trying to hold on against Alan. Alan's not giving up this fight. Look at him. He's really at the back. He's trying to put the pressure on up to turn four. And I tell you what. It is pressure. Oh, Alan. Alan's got a three second time out for multiple. He's the first driver to hit the penalties. That is not what he wanted. That is not what he wanted in this race. But it is very tough in these tough conditions, though. But they're trying to push those bar They're pushing everything, the barriers, as much as they can with this car, with these cars. I'm just speechless, though, Mike. It's just been a classic race again. Absolutely. And look at the top. Emil Lundell for Team Sweden has closed within a second of 
both of the finish drivers. He is now there. And what we're going to get is a, a classic, a classic battle between nations that have a lot of history together. Sweden and Finland. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll be interested to see how they can try and push on now massively. And um, so still watching. Oh, Jack's back. The back end of his car has just had a little bit of a wiggle wiggle moment. And they're going down the straight. And nothing of it yet, Mike. Yeah, Alan, uh, not close enough to really uh, push the push the mistake into a potential overtaking opportunity there. But uh, Alan Banazak has uh, obviously got that three second time plan. He needs to make sure that he does not. Oh, as I think he might have just had a little tap from the rear from, uh, from Seb. As these conditions are really causing a lot of carnage here. As Oscar has been held up uh, massively by uh, Alan there. He's trying to get his car back under control. That's allowed uh, not only Seb but also uh, Harry Nunns to go up the order. So again, another free position for the Swedish and the English driver. As it looks like Harry Nunns might be looking at an overtake down the inside into the chicane. No, backs out of it. Smart driving there from Harry Nunns. As he is going to be sizing this move. Probably down here towards turn number 12. Uh, as long as he can get a, a good middle sector here, keep it nice and tight through uh, through 8, 9 and of course through turn number 10 here now in towards turn 11. He's a good launch out here, he gets a good launch and he's pretty much alongside oh. him already on the ERS. Down the inside goes Harry Nunes and I think Seb uh, just oh, gave that up. Oh, oh my, my god, god. Alan Banazak, that is a, that is a lunge from the heavens right there and harry nance is definitely not going to be happy with that and i think there's going to be some strong words between some of the drivers after this race that is for sure absolutely look at them they're still battling now they're still battling so, oh no crash there's the big contact between the two drivers i can tell that they're oh. and, and the ferrari hit the hit the side of alan as well so um so that's not good news i think it's oh three to bed we had a three to bed moment now that is insane the ferrari I can't see the Ferrari to try to pass. And what a move. What a move there by Harry. Yeah, Harry uh, trying to stay, stay on the inside of uh, Jerry Van Russell. Jerry trying to come back through. Uh, Alan retires from the race. Of course, uh, not happy with uh, with how things were going. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's understandable with uh, how things were going there. I mean, it's just uh, Formula One racing. This is not bumper cars. And it was definitely uh, looking like bumper cars. But... At the end of the day as well, I mean, it, it, some of the lunges that we've seen so far in this race have uh, been quite unacceptable uh, from a, uh, a standards point of view. And uh, I think uh, the stewards definitely will be having a, a fair few words with some of these drivers after the race. Just in terms of uh, not keeping your cool, not losing your head. And uh, I think uh, right there we saw uh, Alan just losing his head slightly. Yeah, it's just un it's just unfortunate for him at the minute because he he's now DNF and out of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Still, I'm just watching the bar at the back. It's it's more action at the back uh, than it is at the front at the moment. Uh, Mikola just trying to close the gap onto Thomas Covers, but he's under a lot of pressure from uh, Hazara, and they're going down the straight now. Hazara, just watching it from his point of view, to try to keep that car intact. But it is going to be inside stuff. It looks like Emil's getting close to Tope. Uh, on the two uh, finish uh, track. Oh, Hazara. Hazara sends one down the inside and Nowicki does give him the room there, but gets the better traction on the exit. Nowicki holds on to P10 and holds on to uh, his position. Meanwhile, you got uh, Jerry Van Russell really trying to put the pressure on Harry Nance. you got a big snap on the rear there from the English driver as Jerry Van Russell now on his ERS going to try to force the Englishman into a mistake. Will we see, oh, there's a little bit of contact there coming through turn four on the exit oh. as uh, Mikola Nowicki picks up a three second time penalty. Not ideal for him, especially with his uh, teammate out of this race of uh, Alan Balanzak as uh, both him and the Zara uh, were side by side momentarily and uh, Nowicki now around at turn five. I think uh, they potentially side by side, maybe a small bit of contact between them and uh, turn five claiming a, a victim here in this race course. One of the, one of the corners where around this circuit you really do not want to touch that inside curb absolutely not and uh, they're trying to push that to the barrier it looks like it looks like Hazara went really wide uh in just at, inside the third sector and now oh my days Oscar Oscar go go around the outside of, of Jerry 
Two to bed. We've got two to bed moment now. We're going to side by side moments on the last corner. I tell you what, Oscar. I have to give you an award with that. What a move indeed. But can Jimmy spoil the party and try to put the pressure on Oscar? He's doing right. everything Here he can. Here comes Jamie although he's coming back at him. Down in towards turn number one. He's going to look to the inside. And here comes the Dutch River again. But Ooh. he slides around under breaking. And that is the trickiness when it comes to these Go conditions. In. Still going now. Um, uh, Nicola has got a another. He's got a five-second penalty for speeding the pit lane. But oh, the sorry pits. to be there, Mikey. Uh, he, he's, to... he came into the pits, retired from the session. Uh, not happy, and uh, I think both uh, both of the Polish drivers are uh, not entirely happy with how things went uh, here tonight. And like I said, I think the stewards uh, post race will be having a, a strong word with many of the drivers here tonight because uh, in terms of, like the lunges and everything that we've seen so far. I mean, yeah. it has been somewhat unacceptable, uh, unacceptable uh, driving that uh, thus far. But we have had some great moments in that, and we've also had some uh, questionable moments also in this race. Lap 11 of 35, as uh, Nasquai in the chat saying no lineup, and I'm assuming that potentially you are you are talking about uh, Team Romania, who uh, who of course are. Uh, not uh, not here tonight. Unfortunately, they weren't able to put a lineup out, which is unfortunate for them because they uh, are definitely a team to keep an eye on. But they're just going to lose ground in the championship fight here by not having a, a, a full team represented. As Thomas covers into the pit for Team Netherlands, and our confirmation he was uh, he was talking to uh, Nordic Ninja, who was asking why was Germany marked as DSQ. Uh, okay, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, Team Germany did not put a lineup out here tonight. Uh, unfortunate uh, that we didn't see the Germans because personally, I, I love the battle between uh, Germany and England. It's, uh, it's and especially like your know, Germany, England, and France. That's uh, an old age rivalry going all the way back, uh, pretty much millenniums at this point. Uh, but Absolutely. Yeah, the top Absolutely. three, top three, uh, all within a second of each other. Obviously, Tino leading the way for Team Finland. Top in second place for Team Finland. And then, of course, we've got the Swedish driver of Emil Lundell there for Team Sweden in third. Uh, Tony Riesch for Team France, really trying to get onto the back of these guys up ahead. And he's really pushing everything he can to get within uh, this battle at the front. And then, of course, we've got the Team England pairing of Jack Laverty and Harry Nunes in P5 and P6, respectfully. However, Jerry Van Russell putting pressure on Harry Nunes for that P6 as uh, Team Netherlands uh, tried to get themselves ahead of the Team English driver. And then, of course, we've got both of the uh, Norwegian drivers of uh, Oscar and Hazara in 8th and 9th. Uh, for, uh, sorry, Seb uh, for <laughs> Team uh, hey. Sweden, uh, they're in 10th place. And, of course, uh, Thomas Covers uh, in P11 for Team Netherlands, of course, he's made a pit stop, as has Seb in this race. So these are the two drivers, the only two that have made a pit stop thus far. Lap 13 of 35, as we look to see who's going to be making a move. And look at this now, Jay Van Bussel sends one to the inside, switches to the left, switches to the right, and back down the inside he goes. But he runs very deep, and that's allowed Harry Nance to get back through, and almost opened the door for his Oscar to get through as well for uh, Team Norway. So... I mean, Jay Van Russell definitely looks like he, he can get through on Harry Nance, but it's all about getting that car slowed down at turn one. He definitely seems to be struggling somewhat. Absolutely. I think I, I, I thought what, what was going on with Jerry at the minute, because he, he was trying to keep intact, but then last minute ditch to try and make the move into turn one, and uh, it nearly paid off, but his back end just could not hold on at turn one. So he's trying to push on now to put the pressure on Harry in sixth place. I'm coming to the chicane part now. But still, the top three of the, the, the two pins and Emil trying to hold, trying to close the gap. And uh, if you imagine the safety car uh, coming in at this point to make it even worse for the Finns, who have done everything they can to pull away from everyone else. And it's just insane stuff. And from what I've been told, Mike, well, from what I've been told with the weather, it is going to be all wet throughout this race. There is no dry at any point in this race. Uh, it's definitely going to make things interesting. Of course, the uh, the rain's still coming down here. I'm wondering if we're going to get a, a change over to the wet compound tyres at some point, whether it's going to be intermediates for the entirety of the race. That is going to be an interesting uh, an interesting uh, predicament if it does get the full wets as uh, timing the pit stop onto the wet compound tyres is going to be absolutely crucial. And you never know just how long 
it's going to be uh, full wet for it, as I believe you were just spotted, spotted something. Was it uh, Jerry having a look on the hurry? Yeah, he was sorry for two inches there, uh, Mikey. He was just making the move uh, on Harry and a little bit, but he, he's just teasing Harry, saying, look, I'm here. I want to make this move, and I want to do it right now. But the more he's behind Harry, the more frustrated that Jerry's going to be at this point in this race, because you, at the moment, the gap between Harry and his teammate Jack, it is about 10 seconds, though. It, it, and to be fair, England are doing well to hold on, but Jerry will be out. Absolutely fuming. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, in the chat right now, we do have the uh, the English maestro uh, uh, of Dylan Warren in the chat right now saying Jack's very lonely. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jack is very lonely at the moment. He's uh, six and a half seconds behind uh, Tony Reese, who's now got back within uh, one second of Emil. So uh, Tony Reese has the pace to get himself back into this. So we're going to have a four way fight for the, uh, the race win uh, from the looks of it. And then, of course, uh, Jack is nine and a half seconds ahead of Harry Nunns and Jerry Van Bussell here, battling out for P6. So Jack in a very lonely spot here. Uh, of course, Dylan last time out in uh, in Spain, I mean, it, it looked like it was all in Team England's hands. They were in control of the race, one two in qualifying. It was one two in the race, uh, but an unfortunate wheel disconnection uh, happened for Dylan. Hopefully his uh, wheel and everything is uh, okay now and we'll be able to see him again. But J.R. Nope. Russell here, again, is a lock-up in the turn one. He could just cannot keep that car in a, in a relaxed order going through turn number one. And there we just see Harry Nunn's tapping the back of J.R. Russell going through turn number two. Yeah. Potential wing damage for the Englishman now. Absolutely. Uh, uh, from from the telemetry I've got at the minute, there is no wing damage from uh, from the driver itself. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but there is no uh, wing damage from what I could see uh, with the stats itself. So Harry is trying to hold on for dear life. Uh, good evening to everyone that's joining the chat. Big big lock up for Oscar into the chicane and. He's lost all the time that he had on uh, Harry Nance. He did well to not go into the back of uh, the Englishman, but obviously now the switch happens between the Norwegian drivers and Cesaro is now up into P8. But yeah, I mean, what that has done now is essentially made this uh, battle between J. Van Russell and Harry Nance strictly between these two only. And we have the top four all within a second of the car ahead. And in fact, right now, Tino looks like he's uh, trying to pull away from the front. So maybe... Maybe a bit of a Team Finland strategy coming into the play. Maybe Tob's been given the order. Back up the pack. We got this, lad. Yeah, he, 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 he hopefully he definitely got it at the minute, but he's just going to be under a lot of pressure and trying to keep that momentum going. But it is very, very tough at this stage. But Dino's doing really, really well uh, to hold on in first and Tob in second. It's just like... Uh, Oscar's still in the pits at the moment. Thomas covers in moves up to ten after that, after that pit stop. But Harry, Harry's getting close to Jerry now. Still for the sixth place. Oh, Jerry has lost all this front wing damage, and it, it is now uh, Harry's lost the front left hand plate. Absolute heartbreak there for the English driver as he does now have damage on that Aston Martin. And he's just going to be a sitting duck now in this middle sector. He's going to lose so much time to Jerry. But Hazara now has to be uh, has to be smart about how he goes through on this uh, middle sector now. Because, I mean, Harry's just going to be understeering wide for the corners. He's going to have to take him a bit slower as well. As you see Hazara there trying to get a tight line. And it looks to get around the outside. And he is going to get around the outside. from Harry uh, let him go there because he knows he's not going to be able to battle. And Harry... Uh, we'll have to come into the pit lane. Fortunately, uh, lap 16 of uh, 35, he should be able to get the, another set of inters to the end, but he will be plum dead last in this race now. Oh, contact yeah, the Seb. We see we're both in sync there, uh, Mark. <laughs> we're both in sync. Uh, Jerry's going to the pits. Uh, Harry should be going to the pits as well. I think, I think it is the right time because normally the intermediates, it's the same higher length as the medium oh, oh jerry's Jerry, retired jerry retires oh. from the race and oh honestly i mean we have had a few uh, a few instants in this race now i've noticed as well i don't know about you but i've noticed a few lag spikes in this game as well uh in this race i'm wondering whether 
we have a little bit of a decent lobby somewhat, but especially when you're getting close to another car. But possibly, possibly, mate. But I'm not 100% sure because at the moment I've not uh, touch wood. I've not seen much lag spikes at all during this lobby, but. I would not be surprised if that's the cause of it of him retiring, but it's unfortunate we had 15 started, Mike. We had 15 started, now 10 remaining. And just watching the battle between Pope and Emil for second and third place, and now Tony is getting close uh, for the top three. It is quite intense at the halfway mark, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. About to go into lap 18 of 35 as uh, Tino's into the pits, as is uh, Tony Reese. So both of them uh, looking to get the undercut as uh, obviously Nolan Ninja put in the chat saying uh, crossplay was uh, broken earlier today and was crashing yeah that is uh, that is one thing that we uh, were aware of coming into tonight uh, we were only aware uh, earlier today which is uh, unfortunate but I mean it's, it's one of those ones where obviously Stewards will, will obviously like uh, the admin team and the stewards will obviously look at this race and they'll uh, they'll assess the situation. Uh, if the if the lobby is absolutely broken and the drivers like do have uh, you know enough footage from this race to prove like how bad this lobby was, then maybe Hungary uh, could be rescheduled for the end of the season. I, I don't know. We run it again, but I mean it, it will it will come down to all that, but. I think for right now, we, all we can do is uh, bring you the action as best as possible and persevere with any of the technical issues with the game at the moment, but also uh, with any of the frustrations uh, from the drivers out there on track as well. Uh, absolutely. It's just, it, it is just unfortunate that uh, the lobby uh, just caused this to happen all throughout the, the, the day today of the, the crossplay edition. But, it's just not fair for the drivers because points are at stake. Points are at absolute stake. And obviously, it is the driver's decision to carry on with it, but also, the, obviously, the admins as well. But if there's enough that to prove that they, they can't carry on with it, then I, I'm not really surprised if they do this at the end of the, end of the season, but it's very, very tough at this stage. So, um, so, But everyone else is all split out now, Mike, so... It is very, very tough at the moment. Absolutely, and of course with uh, Tope and uh, with Tope now coming into the pits, uh, he has come out behind uh, Tony Reese and uh, Tony now in a net P2 in this race. Obviously, we're still waiting for pit stops coming from uh, Emil Lundell and of course uh, Jack Laverty. And the gap between uh, Tino and Jack is around uh, 5.8 seconds as Harry Nunn sets a new fast lap of the race as he gets through on Seb up in the P9 now goes to the Englishman and I mean realistically I mean we are here get, there's 10 drivers remaining in this race big opportunity for some big points for these, uh, for these nations if uh, they all get to the check of flag obviously with uh, with the, the point system here in the European Esports Championship, the top 15 do get points. So as long as you saw the end of this race, you would have been guaranteed points here. But we have had several retirees. Of course, uh, we had the collision on lap one between uh, Marge uh, Krizenik and No Grosjean, which uh, saw those two out of the race. Uh, we had Alan uh, Banazak, who I, I, think, uh, I think a bit of head loss uh, came into it. And uh, yeah. obviously just... Uh, just a bumper car central uh, between uh, himself and several drivers out there on the track and he retired uh, on the start finish straight. Obviously, uh, Mikola Nowicki uh, coming into the pits and retiring. And of course, we had uh, Jerry Van Bussel also uh, coming into the pits and retiring from the race. So, it's not ideal, uh, but like I said, we'll have to wait and see what everyone, uh, everyone is saying after this race. I think... Potentially, the lobby uh, might be a little bit decent for the drivers out there. And also, at the same time as well, I, I think there has been some uh, hot heads have prevailed here today in the in the wet dampness of, uh, of Hungary. Absolutely. And it's just that, uh, obviously, the wet conditions is just not helping. Oh, Seb! Seb's out and retired in the... I was just going to say, Seb has retired and left in the pits. So... He won't get any points, so top nine. 
it is crucial for them to hold on, but they're all split out a little bit, except for uh, second, third, and fourth, which could be on for a close battle, as we might see. So, Emil should be going to the pits, you would think. Should be going to the pits at some point. But we have to wait and see how everything goes. Yeah, and right now we're on board with uh, Tino, who's on the back of uh, Jack Laverty. Jack is staying out, which... Uh, it's an interesting call from the Englishman, obviously uh, stretching his uh, first set of inters out. Potentially uh, thinking that he could uh, possibly uh, go up the order late in this race with fresher inters at the end. I don't think he's going to try and take the inters all the way to the end of the race, but what that has done, it, uh, obviously being stuck behind Jack just momentarily, um, it's allowed Tony to close up within a second of, uh, of Tino, but now uh, Tony is on the back of uh, of Jack and he needs to make sure he gets this move done swift and efficiently and you see the and traction he gets oh squeeze did Tony tried to get alongside but there was no way through and what I was going to say is obviously Tony now has to get through on uh, on Jack quick and efficiently but I mean right now you can see the grip difference Tony just has so much more grip he's going up to the inside now into the chicane down the inside goes Tony Reese for Team France and looks like Jack has had to take a, a little bit of a detour through the runoff but Tony now up in the P2 but look at that yeah, he, he got back in the second he lost another second uh, because he was stuck behind Jack in this uh, in this race absolutely and that is just absolute insane to be fair now and well it was a good battle between them two but Obviously, that Jack had, had not much space. That's why he had to go off the track after the chicane. But it's still, they're trying to push on massively. And now, just watching, is, is Jack finally, Jack's finally be able to go into the pits. But he will have some fresh tyres. Remember that, he will have some fresh tyres at the end of the race with a few laps differ to the others, Mike. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we're going to see what Jack will be able to do late in this race. Lap 22 of uh, 35, he's into the pits, fresh set of intermediates going on the Englishman's car. And remember, yeah, he was in a bit of a no-man's land momentarily, as was alluded to by uh, Dylan Warren earlier. Now, though, he's come out not only behind uh, Thomas Covers, but also uh, behind Oscar. So at least he gets to see some cars again. Jack uh, is now not alone out on track. So at least he, he can actually see some cars and have some battles, which uh, of course uh, he'll definitely be looking forward to because he's pretty much been on his own for the majority of this race. Absolutely, I think he need that need that push now to try and get get some opportunities of a lifetime to get himself into a few more positions. But obviously, with the penalty that he's got, he needs to try and somehow get ahead of Oscar as quickly as possible. And we'll have, as I said, we'll have the pressure tyres. Oh, Oscar has lost a bit of the back end and we just brought Jack into play. The Jack of all trades, I like to say. Can he play his car drive? That's the main question of it all, to make the move on to Oscar. It will be a blockbuster award. We'll find out in a moment, Mike. Absolutely. Coming through turn number 11, guess the better traction. Uses a bit of ERS battery. Looks to the inside now for turn number 12. Out breaks the Norwegian, down the inside goes Jack Laverty, and up into P6 goes the Englishman. And on those fresher tyres, should have the grip to pull away and close onto the back of Thomas Covers, who is actually coming into the pits right now. So that will release Jack up into P5 in this race. And now it's going to be a case of how how these tyres are going to affect them, uh, the drivers now late in this race. Because Jack and uh, Emil Lundell, they stayed out uh, a bit longer to obviously have the benefit of the fresher tyres come the end of the race and we don't know if it's going to help them uh, massively come the end of the race but I mean looking at the gaps right now the gaps are pretty much equalised in this race obviously not no one really close to a battle out on track so I mean right now it's just it's just seeing what can happen like seeing the pace of these uh, fresher intermediate winners as you're seeing 5.6 the gap between Emil Lundell and Soap and that is going to come down this middle sector marginally, but actually not. He's come down by about a tenth thus far. Uses a bit of ERS battery, 5.4 now coming through turn number 11. So potentially we could be seeing the uh, the fresher inters, but in this race, really uh, get onto the back of these guys to the podium. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what needs to be because it, they will have the better advantage 
hitting when he hits lap 32, 33. That's, that'll be the crucial laps at this point in time. They just crossed over the line for lap 24, 35 of um, the championship itself. And they're trying to push on massively. Tony needs to do something because he's, split, he's, he's in a, a, fin, uh, a Finnish or Finland sandwich moment. And uh, he's doing everything he can to try and push on. But I would, I'm going to keep an eye on Jack's time because I'm wondering if he's going to try and close the gap onto Emil uh, ahead. I know he's already a lap better off than Emil on the tyre strategy, but I'm just wanting to see if he can try and close the gap compared to him with the others in the top three, which already had about three to four laps extra compared to what they're going to try and do. And just look at, look at the top three now. They're really close to each other. Um, you just can't write the scripts though, Mike. Absolutely not, but the one thing I am looking at right now is the gap to the leader, and of course that gap between uh, Emil Lundell and Tino is coming down, as is the gap between uh, Jack Laverty and uh, Tino. That is also coming down. Unfortunately, at 22.7 seconds, uh, the gap between Jack and Tino, I think Jack will do very well if he can get to the back of uh, Top by the end of this race, obviously. I mean, I, I think uh, potentially stayed out a little bit too long, uh, did Jack. But, I mean, essentially he was in a no-man's land. And I think he's going to remain in a no-man's land for the remainder of this race. Uh, however, for Emil Lundell, though, I mean, there's potential podium on the cards. And there's also the possibility late in this race that he really could uh, come into uh, the rear view mirror of Tino uh, by the end of this race. Mm. It'll be. You just need to get popcorn ready. You just need to get everything ready for a blockbuster moment because it is going to be a classic. And I, I will not be surprised. We we'll just have to watch it. It's 4.1 the gap now from Emil to Toe. Four seconds now. Give it. Give it another three or four laps. Emil needs to try and push on. That's the big question. Oh, Emil went wide. A little bit moment. So. He might have had a penalty, he might have had a warning of a penalty, but pressure moments now, pressure moments now for uh, Emil to try, and it's under four seconds now, Mike, under four seconds to close the gap on the toe. Yeah, absolutely, and of course, Tony Rich, uh, just over a second off the back of Tino for the race lead, and he is using battery to try and get himself onto the back of the finish driver in the race lead right now. Uh, but yeah, right now I think uh, Tino is just holding that gap uh, very well indeed at the front. All eyes are on this man here, Emil Lundell, who is closing in on top. Lap 25, about to begin lap 26 of 35. As the Swedish man, as we saw a little lag spike there, and that's what I was talking about uh, moments ago uh, when we was talking about the, the lobby and that. I think uh, potentially like it might have been a couple of desync moments out there as well as just drivers losing their heads but Emil Lundell he is closing in but is he going to close in quick enough that's going to be the main question and how big of a fight is he going to have with Tope that's going to be another question because uh, obviously Team Finland right now in terms of the points accumulation I mean they came in tonight seven points clear at the front and right now they are picking up uh, 37 points. I'm gonna have a quick look at the fastest lap as well. Uh, they actually yeah, they are 38 uh, due to the uh, pole position point as well. Fast lap is currently with uh, Tony Reach, so they'll have 30, 38 points gained. And then the next uh, next team to them, uh, in terms of uh, the big points gains, I believe potentially would be Team England who uh, pick up, of course, uh, 19. Actually, no, no, Tony Reich, uh, obviously, for Team France, picking up 19 points on his own with the fast slap and P2, as it currently stands. Uh, so, he's gaining Team France 19 points. Team England, right now, with a P5 and a P8, uh, that is also 19 points. So, the gap between those two will stay exactly the same. Um, team Sweden, right now, picking up uh, 12 points with uh, Emil Lundell in P4. And then, of course, we've got uh, Team Norway with uh, a 6th and 7th spot at the moment. They're picking up 19 points as well. So uh, three teams picking up 19 points. And then of course, uh, we got Team uh, Team Netherlands picking up seven points as it currently stands. But, I mean, in terms of the championship, when you look at the...
pretty much a 20 point game for Team Finland. If it stays like this, it's 20 point, uh, it's not, essentially 20 points gained for Team Finland. I think it's a 19 points gained in total. Absolutely. The gap, Sorry, man. The gap will be 26 points if it stays like this. Obviously, Tony Rich is pushing to break up, uh, to break this up a little bit. To give uh, France a few extra points, to take a take a race win for Team France. Of course, the defending champions here in the European Esports Championship. But like I said, if things stay as it is, Team Finland. Not only uh, will they be uh, cooking as we finally got a battle. Oh, contact here! Thomas covers and Harry Nunn's contact through turn three. As I was about to flick on board with them to see uh, to see the the con uh, the, the battle and. Yeah, absolute contact between the pair of them. Heartbreak uh, for Team England and uh, Team Netherlands. It's not gone either country's way. Of course, Team Netherlands in, in coming into tonight were P6 on 34 points. They're going to lose out to Team Norway. That is for sure. As uh, the Norwegian team picking up uh, 19 points here, they'll jump ahead of uh, Team Norway and, of course, Team Romania as well. Team France uh, right now would be uh, sitting P, well, remain P2. Uh, Team England would jump up in the P3, Sweden would be up in the P4, and then of course uh, Norway would be jumping up in the P5, with Romania stay, uh, going down to P6, and the Netherlands going down to P7. That would be how the standings would look if things were to stay as they are right now. As uh, We have uh, Matthias in the chat saying 60 and Fs. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I, I, I mean, a lot of retirements have come through uh, frustration, and that's just uh, retiring in the pit lane. Uh, we do believe that potentially there's uh, an issue with the lobby that uh, could be a little bit of desync issue for some of the drivers out there uh, due to the issue with crossplay that uh, that has been uh, a thing today, of course. And now we do have a battle going on for obviously the final podium position and the race lead as Tony Rich is now within half a second of Tino and Emil Lundell now on the back of Tope. This could go all wrong for uh, Team Finland here come at the end of this race. Uh, to answer the question of uh, which countries are missing, of course, both of the uh, Romanian uh, team, unfortunately, unable to attend here tonight. Uh, we did not have one of the uh, Slovenian drivers here tonight as well. So, Maj was the lone Slovenian driver here. So, and of course, with uh, Germany also not being represented here tonight as ML down the inside into turn one. Oh, it's going to be close in the exit, but I think with a better grip on those tyres, he's just about going to get it done. But Tope's going to use a bit of ERS. And yeah, he backs out of it. He backs out of it. Tope not wanting to risk it as Emil goes a little bit deep. And Emil now up into that final podium position. Uh, and of course, uh, yeah, 15 drivers uh, coming in tonight. Both uh, Romanians, both Germans, and one Slovenian driver unable to attend here tonight. Harry Nunn's into the pit. Uh, possibly going to try and go for that fastest lap of the race to give Team England that extra point uh, right now. Of course, uh, that is being held by uh, Tony Rich for uh, Team France. And of course, we've got uh, Thomas Colors also uh, on a fresh set of inters as well, potentially looking to get himself uh, up the order. Absolutely. And, I just, uh, sorry, Mike. No, no, go on, go on. Uh, so the top two are still battling out with Tino and Tony. They were closing in and closing in as much as possible. And I was just saying earlier on that there was a, a front wing damage for Thomas Covers, but he's gone into the pit already, so he's already sorted that out. Um, still battling out Tony, trying to close the gap onto Tino. But can the Frenchman try to put the pressure on? That's a big question of it all. But Emil doing really, 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 really well at the moment. But can he try and put the pressure on? in the next few laps, so watch out for this space. Yeah, absolutely, as uh, Emil uh, getting onto the back of the, the front two, and what we could be getting, obviously, uh, we had a, a very chaotic uh, first half of the race, obviously plenty of incidents uh, for the stewards to look at, and uh, obviously for drivers to kind of reflect on as well. Uh, potential uh, lobby issues as well, that could have played a factor in some of the incidents that we did see. And what we are now going to get after a pretty uh, a pretty slow uh, second third of the race, uh, what we could get now is a very exciting end as we got three drivers within a chance of the race win here. It is 
Tino for Team Finland, Tony Rich for Team France, and of course Emil Lundell for Team Sweden here. And Tony Rich picks Ooh. up a three-second time penalty. That could be absolutely chaotic now for Team France as uh, Tony Rich now uh, potentially could end up not only losing out a chance of the race win, but also a chance of the podium as uh, Top is still within that three-second window. Absolutely, and that is not good news for Tony at this stage. He knew what he wanted to try and get rid of it um, and not make the penalty itself. Remember, uh, Tino and Emil have only got one warning so far during this race. Uh, Top has only got two warnings, so he's, he's on the limiter as well. So Oscar's also had two uh, warnings as well. So the pressure's mounting, and... It's just too much for Tony at the moment, but unless Tino and Emil make the same mistake, it'll be all hells come blazing in the next few laps. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's in the chat right now, obviously, uh, Nordic Ninja saying everything is fine unless Sweden passes. Of course, referring to this man in P3, Emil Lundell, who uh, does have the fresher of the intermediate tires. That's been closing in quite dramatically over the, uh, the previous laps. Lap 31 and 35. As we have uh, Tomino saying ML easy win, so showing support for the uh, the Swedish driver. Uh, Dylan Warren in the chat saying shouldn't be easy, and I absolutely agree with uh, Dylan on this one. It definitely will not be easy to get the uh, the race win. The fastest lap right now, it, I believe, is still currently being held by Tony Rich, and it is a 128.391 uh, for the Frenchman. And yeah, I mean, what we're gonna have now is just it's going to be elbows out, I think, now to the fullest. Tony Reese needs to kind of put these guys offline to try and get uh, them to pick up three second time penalties. Uh, Tino just needs to make sure he stays ahead of uh, of Tony to just make sure that he doesn't doesn't cost himself any unnecessary time. He just needs to make sure that Tony's not close enough to really battle him. And then, obviously, that won't allow Emil to kind of slip through on the fresher tyres. Emil just needs to take advantage and use his fresh tyres, which he is going to do right now. Down the inside, oh, turn number one, as he got halfway alongside, but did not get the traction that he needed out of turn number one. And, yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, definitely going to be uh, an intriguing one. I mean, Emil right now, he does have the, the better tyres right now. And... In the chat right now, there is a debate on how much uh, better the uh, the tyres are for Emil compared to uh, Tino and uh, Tony. I mean, right now, Tony has a three-second time penalty, so in terms of uh, the race win, he's essentially out of it at this point. Uh, as Dylan Warren says, uh, there's only like two attempts, uh, two attempts or so uh, difference between the tyres right now. Maybe three attempts at the max, but Emil, I mean, if he does get ahead... I think he'll pull ahead as it looks like Tino is now starting to push away from the Frenchman and this could be huge for Tino if he's able to get away and Emil can't get through on Tony ASAP it's going to be a heartbreak for the Swedish one it would be heartbreak for him at the moment but this is just this is where the pressure is absolutely extremely high at this stage because you just do not want to make a silly mistake and, he, and Emil has had a bad mistake at the last corner which is everyone else has put it away Tino's just like not missed the bad as long as he keeps ahead of Tony that's fine even if he drops uh, to second place to Tony as long as it's within three seconds of Tony that's fine but the tyre wear is going to be at the limiter normally it's about 17 to 20 laps normally with the, the intermediates but this is where the pressure is mounted with these tyre wear and and based on what I'm seeing it looks like quite a few drivers are just trying to push as much as possible uh, uh, Dominion says come on Emil push push is what they said on the chat yeah absolutely and uh, Avatar Avatar saying Tino W I mean right now Tino in the race lead for Team Finland has the most ERS <clears throat> At his disposal, Tony Reese second right now for Team France has a three second time penalty, which will drop him off the podium. Uh, ML currently in P3 has the fresher of the intermediate tyres right now, uh, but he is unable to find a way through on Tony Reese as of yet. Definitely disappeared to have more grip than the uh, the Frenchman in front of him, but 
He's just not getting the run that he needs to make the move on the uh, the French driver for P2. Because I think if Emil gets through on Tony, then we are in for an absolute treat uh, for the final two laps here against uh, Tino and Emil. But, I mean, right now, Tino controlling this race. He's not wasting any uh, ERS as well, which is fantastic for him. Um... See, right now, as, as mentioned, Emil needs to try and get through on Tony, but he's unable to do so. He can't get the runs he needs. Top right now is just holding that gap, making sure that he can get that podium finish as Jack Laverty into the pit. And I think this is for a uh, faster slap. I think the Englishman's going for faster slap. Obviously, Harry Nunn's went into the pits, and it uh, looks like he's not going to be able to get the fast slap. I think Jack now is going to try to get that fast slap away from the Frenchman and... With Oscar coming on the start finish straight and Hazara there as well. I mean, they're going to be close, but they're not going to be ahead of uh, Jack. So Jack had the gap to make that pit stop. Obviously, no risk for Jack, but with that three second time down, he needs to make sure he doesn't pick up a second one because then he may end up losing an extra two spots for it. Absolutely. He's just on the limiter itself. Still watching the battle between the top three as we speak. Emil needs to make this move done now if he wants to challenge the top. But it's just too much. I think it's just too much for Emil, unless he makes a really, really dash forward. But it's just, I think it's too little, too late for Emil. But I might be wrong. Unless Tony makes a mass mistake, I just can't see Emil making a move at this lap. It looks like Dino is holding on for dear life, and he's about to cross the line to do the final lap of this race, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. As we begin the final lap of this race, doesn't look like uh, Emil or Tony are close enough to try and go for a move into turn number one. But a big mistake there from Tino. That's going to allow Tony to go side by side Ooh. on the exit. And this is where things get a little bit spicy. As now Tony going to put a little bit of pressure on the finish driver at around the outside in turn no. two. As Tony Reach trying to hang it over no. on the outside. Tino's on the inside. They're still side by side. What? As we're on board right now with Emil looking at this battle. The battle for the race lead out on track. Remember, as Toe picks up a three second time penalty as well. So now Tony Reach is on for a podium. And this right now gives Emil a chance to take the race win. All he's got to do is get a good enough run on Tino to make, the, make a move down in towards turn number 12. And this is where the pressure begins to build for not only Emil but also for Tino. As Tony Reach now, he's, he's through, he's into the race lead. But obviously with that three second time penalty, he is going to lose out. Tony Reach so able to get through into the race lead. Now it's all about to run out of turn number 11. Who is going to have the best run? I think Emil's just had a brilliant run, but it doesn't look like he's had a good enough run. No. He's had a little half look, but he's not going to go for it as we go through turn number 12. And there's only two opportunities left for Emil. He has a peak, but doesn't want to send it down the inside. He needs to get a good run out of here. And then that, that oh, is Tino. Tino yeah. is going to be able to take this race win for Team Finland as a Swedish driver. Uh, essentially, the, uh, Tokyo drifted him through the final corner. And it's going to be... Tino who takes victory, Emil with a P2 finish, Tony Reich completes the podium as Tokle in P4 as we're on board right now with Jack Laverty as uh, he's three and a half times up on his personal best lap time. Is Jack Laverty for Team England going to be able to take the fastest lap point in this race? Let's find out as we come through the final corner for the final time with the Englishman. Traction on the exit appears to be okay, but ERS is going to be dumped, and it's going to be the fastest lap for the Englishman. That's an extra point for Team England in this race, and I think uh, that will bring them up to 20 points in totality. As Oscar and Hazara there for Team Norway picking up uh, a sixth and seventh place uh, finish respectfully, and we got Harry Nuns now coming through to take P8, and last but not least, uh, the Dutch driver of Thomas Covers. Uh, will be taking that final uh, position there in P9. Uh, but obviously a quick uh, a quick reminder of uh, the amount of points that have been gained here. Of course, uh, 45 points have been gained for Team Finland. If things stay as they are, uh, 18 points for Team Sweden. Uh, 16 points gained for Team France. And reversing across the line there is uh, Thomas Covers, and that's fantastic. Um... 20 points gained for Team England in this race. 19 points gained for Team Norway. And of course, 7 points gained for Team Netherlands in the end. 
and we will see uh, what happens with regards to Stewart's inquiries because I think there's definitely going to be some uh, some reports put in that is for sure. Uh, but it is that man, the finished driver on the top step of the podium. Incredible race at the end, and he just had he just had a covered. He just had a covered. He did have a little bit of a moment. Did uh, Tino on the final lap in turn one? But fortunately for him, it was Tony Rees who had a three-second time penalty that took advantage, and not the Swedish driver of Emil Lundell. Absolutely, it was just an explosive ending, and we were looking forward to seeing some more as we go through the the championship as it stays. So we just got the race classification for Mike to uh, to do the race classification. Yeah, absolutely, and of course it is Team Finland's Tino who does take victory ahead of uh, Team Sweden's Emil Lundell who uh, gets second place. Tony Reich for Team France completes the podium with Tope uh, for Team Finland taking P4. Jack Laverty for Team England uh, does take home the fast slap and P5 finish there for Team England. Then we have the Norwegian appearing of Oscar and Hazara P6 and P7 respectfully. Harry Nunns for Team England takes home P8 and of course Thomas covers for Team Netherlands in P9 and then we have our non-finishers of Seb, Jerry Van Bussel, uh, Mikola Nowicki, Alan Banazak, uh, Maj Krasinik and of course Noah Grosjean, the all non-finishers here tonight and I mean it's a race that is going to uh, cause a bit of controversy, especially uh, in the stewards. Because I think, I mean, unless it was like severe lag that was going on in the lobby, the standards of some of the moves and uh, the respect you enter each other out on track wasn't up to par of what we're used to, uh, Malk. Absolutely not. And um, it, probably, it will definitely need to be checked as well, because otherwise... It, it it just needs improving if it was um, based on that, that what we've just seen. And hopefully the standards will improve in round four, I believe. So hopefully so, fingers crossed. But overall, I think it was just a good race from start to finish. But obviously the standards need to improve. Yeah, I mean, we had a, a fair few uh, good moments in the race. Of course, uh, early on, remember, free wide into the chicane. Uh, how that didn't end in disaster, I do not know. But uh, that was obviously a, a very good moment. Obviously, the opening uh, couple of laps uh, were incredible. And then, obviously, we saw a little bit of the, the standards begin to slip. Obviously, in these tricky conditions where it can be difficult to keep the high level of standards. And, yeah, I mean, I'm sure everyone will be looking at this race and there. Uh, they either be reflecting on themselves uh, for any mistakes that they've made uh, tonight, or they'll be uh, like putting in their stories reports and obviously looking at the the lobby and everything itself. But of course, that is round number three, uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. Yeah, round number four next week takes us to the Temple of Speed, Malk. We head to Monza for the Italian Grand Prix. Get in there, uh, unbelievable stuff, and Mamma Mia. We we'll have to wait and see who's going to be at the 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 the, the, the classic track of it all. Straight line, uh, straight line speeds, uh, the Ascari cores, uh, the Les, you know, the Lesma corners. It is going to be intense. But who can keep that car intact after the Ascari corners and the Parabolica corner? Oh, we're in for a thrill of the ride. Abso say. Absolutely, and of course. Uh... The Red Filio and the Della Rocha Chicanes as well, where it's going to be so crucial to get traction out of those two particular uh, Chicanes. And of course, uh, as you mentioned, the Lesmos, Ascari, uh, Parabolica, so many iconic corners around the Temple of Speed. And in front of the Tafosi as well, I mean, Team Netherlands will be looking to, to put their Ferrari uh, as high up as possible. Uh, again, let's have a look at the, uh, the standings here, obviously, coming in uh, tonight. It was Team Finland that was leading the way by seven points. They obviously do increase the gap uh, quite considerably. I believe uh, with uh, Tony Reese dropping down to P3 and with uh, Team England getting the uh, the fastest lap point in the end, I believe Team England now jump up to second in the championship with uh, France in uh, P3. And I think Sweden uh, go up to P4. Uh, then, of course, uh, Norway, I believe, jump up into P5. Netherlands, I 
believe they jump up ahead of uh, Romania now. So they up in P, well, they remain in P6, I believe. And uh, Romania go from P3 all the way down to P7, of course, with Slovenia, uh, Poland. Uh, obviously, no drivers uh, finishing for them tonight. And of course, uh, Denmark, who did pull out early in the season, uh, they're in 10th. And we uh, we do think that we will get uh, a German team next time out. And of course, that is a quick reminder of the point system here in the European Esports Championship. Uh, but yeah, next week it is going to be the Temple of Speed for us. Uh, of course, here on League Racing TV tomorrow night. It is, of course, the Esports Masters League. Of course, Formula 2 uh, getting underway at 7 p.m. UK time. And, of course, Formula 1 with myself and James Head uh, getting underway uh, at 8 p.m. And, honestly, a lot of action going to be happening on League Racing TV. So make sure you guys do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of the action. But, Malk, any closing comments uh, to wrap up here in Hungary for round number three? Uh, just well done to Finland, and they've extended that lead, and they're keeping it going, and uh, causing mayhem. To be fair, for um, to to get that title as quickly as possible, and England as well to get themselves moved up to second place. So it's been uh, a bit of a good race overall. But obviously, hopefully, some of the drivers will improve their standards, and hopefully, we'll see some more action galore like we have been at Monza. Yeah, absolutely. But until then, guys, I am Michael Edwards. He is Malk, and we'll catch you next week for round number four at the Temple of Speed. Until then, guys, it is good night from the pair of us. Good night. Good night.